Well, folks, we managed to survive the cliffs of the Basque Country and the Bay of Biscay. On today's show, we're taking a look at a new combined motor gearbox, and we have some very special guests from Italy. Well, it seems many years now that we've been tracking the progress of the combined motor gearbox systems as an alternative to the trusty old derailleur. Now, we have run alternative hubs on the back of many hardtail e-bikes here on EMBN, such as the Shimano Nexus and Alphine systems. But um, when it comes to the mid-drive combined motor gearbox, they're quite thin on the ground. There are systems available, and we've seen many of these at the Eurobike show over the past four or five years, such as the Mobea system, which was a four kilo unit. And then of course we rode the Vallejo system on a bike out in Verbia e-bike festival last year. So I think from, from my feelings of the bikes I've ridden, I think there's still a way to go with many of the systems on the market, but I've actually just noticed a new one and it comes in the shape of Okawa, the AT60. Now this is, 5.3 kilos, 110 newton meters, uh, cadence range up to 120 RPM, 250 watts obviously, four gears and 48 volts. I think it's it's very much of the shape and size of many of those other ones which I mentioned uh, a minute ago, but I think it seems we might be on the move towards um, getting some off the shelf combined motor gearboxes on the market. So folks, let us know what you think of the Okawa. I think it's definitely a step in the right, right direction. Obviously we've not ridden it, but we hope to very soon. Well, as promised, we have some very special guests on the show today in the form of Pirelli, who are a new tire partner here on EMBN. We are joined by Sam from Milan. Uh, sunny Milan, I'm guessing? Uh, kind of, <laughs> not really. Hi everybody. Uh, so, let's talk about Pirelli, let's talk a little bit about the heritage, let's talk about mountain bike tyres, e-bike tyres. Now, I guess you've been obviously famous for two-wheel sport for some time, right? I guess that strong motocross heritage. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we are uh, known for motorsport in general, I think. Maybe I think F F1 that, yeah. should be the one most, most known for, but uh, the reality is that we have uh, deep roots in, in two wheels, off-road especially with motocross tires, which is uh, how we brought it to the mountain bike tires under the name of Scorpion, which is a flagship name for us, really successful in the past. So it made total sense to go after the naming for mountain bike tires as well. So Scorpion is your off-road brand of tire? Yeah. And I guess that's, you mentioned motocross and some very famous riders, Caroli and uh, Jeffrey Hurlings, right? 70 world titles, I think you guys have had, is that right? I uh, should be 75 uh, by now, <laughs> kind of, yes. So, and and then of course you've got, uh, Scorpion is also a WRC brand of tire as well, right? Yeah, yeah. it transitioned to the four wheels, but always staying uh, within the off-road uh, landscape of uh, application. So now you can find easily on WRC any terrain which is off-road, it's uh, as Scorpion tires designed for. Should we go into some fine details? Should we get geeky on tires? Now, uh, we've been running, the, obviously Scorpion is an off-road brand. Um, Pirelli have got cross-country, trail, enduro, downhill, and e-bike tires. Specific. Scorpion is, is the brand of tire, but we're looking at M, S, R, and T, correct? Yeah, actually the, the logic of the naming, it's designed, uh, uh, it goes with a thread pattern first. Uh, then there are different rubbers uh, to choose from, usually a couple, which we select for the disciplines. Uh, in general, uh, given that the Scorpion is the general name, we daily talking about the model name, which is defined by the letter and the color, uh, which is after the kind of terrain the thread pattern is designed for. So M goes for mixed condition. S stands for soft condition, so a more loose, uh, loose terrain. R was, uh, is still made for rear specific. Uh, then T, which is coming with the race, uh, the race line, it stands for traction. So we try to help the consumer to uh, uh, define and understand the tire just by the name. They have to remember the initial letter. That's uh, so. Say you were say you were riding in nice spring conditions in uh, north of Milan. What sort of you know maybe it's a bit of rock, a bit of route. What what type, what what compound did you go for? 
It's uh, the mix uh, by the name and by definition uh, when you have uh, a bit of everything. Uh, the mix tire is the one that is considered the all rounder. The yeah, the yeah. one, the M. And the yeah. S, where would you use the S compound? I would say that that can be more a uh, UK tire when you get more uh, loose <laughs> okay. ground. I mean, the soft soil where the tread pattern has to dig in. That's that's the logic. It's pretty simple. So yeah. Well, of course, the the Canyon Collective team, the downhill and the Enduro race team yeah. run on Pirelli tires. So what would be what would be their, their go-to tire when they use it when they're racing? They are using the majority of the time the M, same, mm -hmm. uh, with the T. Uh, also used on the back, sometimes on the front. But I would say that 17% of the time they go on uh, okay, with, right. uh, with the M. Uh, now, I've been running the Scorpions in M and S, and I think one thing which I've noticed is we did a we did a tire recently where I took the tire pressures down to like five, five, six, seven uh, psi, and I know for a fact that on some tires they would simply have come off the rim a long time ago. What 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 enables these tires? The the e-bike tire. We're talking e-bike tire now specifically. What enables that to to anchor itself onto the rim so well? That's a good question. Uh, in particular, true for the EMTB tires, uh, we had. Uh, a design phase where we identified exactly this characteristic to be very important because of the way the EMTB uh, pressure is, is handled by the average consumer. So we specifically designed a casing, which is uh, a, a pet, pet, patent pending one, which is coming from a motocross construction. So this is actually mm. one of the proofs uh, that how it works with the cross uh, uh, division uh, R&Ds, uh, which moved, uh, I, Put in simple words, it moves the reliability and the thickness of the casing and the stability uh, all on the sidewalls, especially over the bit area, exactly to enable and allow you to use very, very low pressures without uh, coming off the rim, but also being stable, mm -hmm. relatively stable. I so think you, the stability is a huge thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If, you, if you touch the tires and you squeeze them, you really feel that the, the rigidity of the sidewalls it's much more different than the one on the tread, which is not typically how the downhill tires are constructed usually. Right. I mean, yeah. a downhill tire is more spread all over the, uh, the casing in terms of thickness, while this one for EMTB specific is a lot more thick on the sidewalls so that they are very solid and a little bit more flexible on the yeah. angle. I mean, let's, let, let's face it, e-mountain biking is, is a completely new discipline, isn't it? You know, you've people who climb technical trial sections and you've got downhill and you've got like the bits in between. You, you, you need a tire which is super versatile, don't you? Yeah, no, we actually analyze how the bikes have been used and that's where we start to see the differences from pure gravity-oriented tires. I mean, you have this component of traction, you have the motor, so you have more torque across the lifetime of the, of the tire. You need still the rolling uh, fe uh, characteristic to be, to be effective, so you have to balance the characteristic of the tires differently than if you do. So it's not just about the reliability and grip, that is too simple. Uh, we had to go down and break down how the tires have to perform on an e-bike specific. So. Okay, time for comments and questions. Actually, I got one comment on something I mentioned earlier. I said that the M, S, T, and R was actually a was compound on the product size. It's not actually compound, it's tread pattern, just to get that right. Uh, right then, folks, comments and questions. First of all, Nigel King, ambulance man in Gatwick. Great to see you last week. Uh, and then uh, relating to the feature I did on my Canyon Spectralon, talked about all the different features about it. This one here is from John Mark in Hudson. Uh, great content again, really appreciate your personal experience on this bike and or any other bikes. Proves you can talk about a sponsor and still give it a very credible information. Like, like I said, guys, you can ask me about anything, about any bikes that I've ever ridden. I will give you total feedback on whether it's battery, motor, geometry, tires, wheels, you name it. Nathan Bird, uh, just had the CF9 delivered last week. Bike is insanely good. The videos and reviews really helped me choose from a plethora of ENTBs. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Forex Trader Evangelist, uh, I am 192 centimeters. Canyon's website says I fit a large frame, but other brands say I need an XL. I'm thinking I should go XL on the Canyon. Uh, Forex Trader Evangelist, I think you should go for XL for sure. Uh, I'm six foot, I, like I mentioned, I can ride the both. 
Um, Jim M, I appreciate your, appreciate your honesty about hyper adjustable suspension. I agree with you. Look, I honestly don't think you need 15 clicks of rebound, 15 of compression adjustment, and then high and low speed. It's like you talk plethora, there's a plethora there for sure. Uh, rural, rural pest control white wall. What kind of mileage do you get from a 900 watt hour battery compared to a 625 or a 720? Well, I actually have done a video which compares the 720 with the 900. I'll leave a link in the description down below. It's on the EMBN channel. Drew502, what size would you recommend for someone 5 foot 10, 178 centimeters? I reckon you could do an L quite easily. You could possibly do an M too, but maybe an L with a shorter stem. Uh, and then finally, uh, nice one, Steve. This is from Gary Haynes. Good, honest video, which sometimes lacking on the EMTB channels. Like I said, folks, any questions you've got related to bikes, just fire them at me. I'm more than happy to get involved. Now, I've saved this part of the show for uh, picking out some nice bikes I've seen, which I've selected from the Bike Vault. I've done it for reasons of looks more than anything else. So um, I'm looking at uh, a few bikes this week, uh, two decoys to begin, one from Simon in Showed Pines, and then this other color decoy uh, from Nicholas in Sweden. I really think this color decoy I think it's I think it's a good look, I have to say. Uh, talking colours, we've got a lovely canyon here and sort of baby blue from Andre. And what about this? What about this beauty? This beauty is from Julie. It's a, a cube stereo. Uh, she's located in Puddletown Forest, but I think I think this brown is is absolutely stunning. Nick, what do you think of that 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 cube there look? Ooh, yeah. It's a looker, right? absolute look at the Bosch motor. So folks, like I said, um, it's just a section where I pick out some, some fancy bikes which have uh, caught my eye in the past week. Okay, what we got? What we got? What we got in terms of cool places? All right, uh, Chuck is in Pueblo State Park. Nice trails there. Uh, something more Californian if, if you have to take your fancy. Well, how about this and Leo on his special Turbo Levo out on Mount Wilson in California. And then moving back. I mean, anybody recognize this place? I certainly do. It's uh, it's only Skiddo, Skiddo Forest or Skidder as they call it, or as Adam Brayton calls it. Uh, it's a hell of a place to go riding bikes. Please, if you ever get a chance to go to the Lake District and you've got an e-bike, it is an absolutely banging place to ride. Oh, and I just thought I'd chuck this one in to finish. This is, uh, this is the boys. The boys down in South Wales. Now, if you want to add your pictures or your videos, uh, there's a link in the description to the uploader where you can put your bikes, you can put your locations, the cool places you go ride in your e-mountain bikes. You can do your uh, climb of the week, super technical climb, staircases, you name it, or maybe some tech which you think that we should see or anybody should see here on EMBN. So like I said, there's a link in the description to the uploader. Okay, bike vault time. Uh, we've got some bangers in this week and I'm gonna kick things off with uh, look at this beautiful Orbea. Now, we were at Orbea actually last week. You might have seen the cliff ride which we did, but obviously the Orbea Rise, the Orbea Wild, fantastic bike. So I'm definitely gonna give a super nice to Rui uh, and uh, an Orbea Ob Rise or her Orbea Rise in the Algarve in Portugal. I love a dirty bike, I have to say. Um, next up, uh, that's super nice by the way, like I said. Uh, it's a flip and a full, Custom 2019 Giant SXE Trance. Big fan of the Trance. Keep an eye out for a new video coming on the channel on new Giant e bugs soon. That's super nice. Uh, and then another Orbea, this time Orbea Wild FS Team XL. That's a banging shot, I have to say, Dan. Absolute banger, that is super nice. Uh, and then we've got Robert Lapierre Oval. We don't get to see that many Lapiers on the channel, so guys, any more French bikes, send them in. That's a nice shot. Um, and then hardtail, why not? Mix Orbea Uran. This is in Dal Beatty. Um, several Steve's pet hates here. Hardtail. <laughs> hardtail EMTV, Mudguard's bar bag, total lack of colour accents. <laughs> uh, Nick, that's a bit harsh. 
um, I think hardtails in the right place are great. I think mud guards, I've used them, keep your bum clean. Bags, I've, I've used countless bags going riding on, on, on the MBN, so you can take your, take your batteries, you can take your food. I mean, Mick, you got that very wrong, you got that very wrong. And because of that, you get a nice, sorry, super nice. Uh, and then finally, Michael's high bike out in Jersey. Always a great colour scheme, a fantastic bike. That is, we rode that in North Wales um, at the end of last year. And another super nice. That's it for this week's EMBN show, folks. Don't forget to check out the new Pirelli tyres. They're fantastic for climbing and descending. Thanks so much to the guys for coming over here. And also, finally, but uh, not least, the uh, new combined motor gearbox there, which we showed you at the far first part of the show. Sorry, my mouth's getting a bit uh, tangled, tight twisted here at the end of the show. So probably it's time for me to go and get a coffee. See you next week.